Hello and welcome to a very short radio mechanic video. On the healing bench we have my Wavetech 100 megahertz model 395 arbitrary waveform generator. I went to turn this on last night to do some experiments and was greeted with everything on here going blink 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 and I could hear the power supply in the background going tink 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 and I said okay the bootstrap circuit has failed in the power supply. I wasn't even going to bother making a video on this, but I figured, what the heck, if somebody's got one of these and is having the problem, I, at least I can show you how to get into it. Take off the top cover, take off the bottom cover. They both have to come off. The front panel comes off. There's four screws. There's two on the top two underneath. You take out the four screws, you don't even have to take the knob off and gently pull forward and the whole panel unplugs. There's a connector here, connector there. It comes right off. Just set that aside. The rear panel, four screws. One here, one here, one here, one here, and then on the bottom there's two screws on these little brackets right here. Unplug this connector, take out those two screws, the whole thing will come out with the power supply. It'll come, the power supply will stay attached to this. Once it's out, remove the four screws mounting the power supply and you'll have the power supply in your hand. It's a piece of cake. But the reason I'm making the video is there's a gotcha. I got in here, oh uh, I almost forgot. Once the front panel is off, you'll see an access hole here and here. Those two holes will give you access to the screws that hold the power switch in so that you can take the power switch out without cutting the heat shrink or taking anything apart. It'll come right out. Piece of cake. The scariest part of the whole operation is removing this guy right here from the power switch because you can't get to the bottom screw with this in the way and you have to very very and I mean very gingerly spread this a little bit and wiggle it to pull it off of the power switch you break that you're in trouble I doubt you'll ever find a replacement so we're into it there's very few connections in here you've got a blue and a brown wire, they unplug. There's a three pin connection with only two wires in it. It unplugs. I unsoldered the red and black wire for the fan so that I could leave the fan connected. Four screws and the whole circuit board comes out. Piece of cake. I went in there and this was the little bootstrap capacitor, this little guy here. I yanked him out like a bad tooth and checked it, and it had high leakage, real high leakage. So I replaced this. This was a 35 volt. I replaced it with a 50 volt. That'll never die. And while I was in there, he had a neighbor, a 47 microfarad. I figured, heck, I'm right there. I'll pull that one out too and change it. Then I put everything all back together connected the power, turned the power supply on, and I was greeted with tink, tink, and the fan going bump, bump, bump. And I'm like, oh crap, there's something else wrong with this. Do I really want to play with it? Let's see what I can find on eBay. Punched in the part number, immediately came up with three links to a website that would do me the great favor in seven to ten days of repairing it for a mere four hundred and sixty five dollars. I think I paid a hundred and fifty for the waveform generator like ten years ago. I'm not giving them four hundred and sixty five bucks. Looked on Flea Bay. There has to be this is a Skynet made in Taiwan, Skynet power supply. There has to be three hundred Skynet power supplies, none of them the right voltage or model number. This is plus or minus 17, plus or minus 5, plus and minus 5, sorry. While I was sitting over there at the keyboard, my 286 processor finally kicked in. 
And I said, gee, way back in the day, if you didn't have a switching supply connected to its load, a lot of them wouldn't start. A lot of them had to see a load and or some kind of feedback from the analog circuitry on the board they're connected to. So I came over here, plugged the two connectors back on the motherboard, bada boom, bada bing, we're back in business. Everything's running just fine. So if you have one of these and you do replace those two capacitors, remember it's gotta be plugged into the motherboard or it won't boot. That, that had me for a couple of minutes. Most modern switchers will fire up just fine without a load on them. So just keep that in mind. And that's all there is to taking it apart and getting it in there. I'm not going to show you me putting it back together. It's bone simple. You know, a dozen screws. This is out in your hand. Replace those two caps. Put everything all back together and you're back in business. Don't forget to solder your fan wires back in. That's it. I'm the radio mechanic. Hope somebody out there with a uh, one of these waveform generators, the Model 395, finds this useful. Maybe it'll save you. Take care. I'm out of here.